Thank you, Chairman Klein, and thank you to you and Chairman Alexander and Congressman Scott and Senator Murray for your inspired leadership. But I also want to thank uh, teachers and students and parents and principals all across Colorado who have helped me think about uh, the reauthorization of this law. It is long past time to reauthorize this law. As, as Chairman Alexander said, uh, no one else in America gets to turn their homework in seven years late, and we shouldn't be allowed to do that either. This process has been a rare exception uh, around here of bipartisan work, and I think in addition to the skillful leadership on, in both chambers, another reason for that, I suspect, is that if you had a rally tomorrow to keep No Child Left Behind the same on the steps of the Capitol, literally nobody would come. Uh, as we sit here today, there are teachers and there are kids all over America, all over Colorado, working incredibly hard, often under adverse circumstances, trying to teach and trying to learn. We need to be honest about what our kids in poverty face in this country, including our kids in color. By the time a poor child in the United States gets to kindergarten, she will have heard 30 million fewer words than her more affluent peers. In 2015, a low-income student in, our, in this country, as we sit here today, has a one in five chance of being able to read at grade level by the, by the fourth grade. If we don't change what we do in terms of our delivery of K-12 education and access to higher education, only nine out of 100 kids born into poverty in the United States of America will graduate with a college degree or its equivalent. There are 100 seats and 100 desks in the, in the Senate chamber. If those represented poor kids in America, nine of those seats would be filled by college graduates. 91 of them would not be. I can't think of anything that is more at war with who we are as a country and, who we think, and how we think about America than those results. And for too many of our children, the education system we have actually reinforces the profound opportunity gap uh, that they face. No Child Left Behind, has been said, had many flaws, but it did force us for the first time to face the facts about how kids in poverty are doing in our schools, and they are not doing well. It exposes schools that are persistently low performing and shed light on the achievement gap. It pushed districts like Denver to step up and make meaningful change. This bill maintains those core components. It builds on our successes while turning us away from the significant failed practices of the past. As the former superintendent of the Denver Public Schools and as the parent of three daughters that attend the Denver Public Schools, I know that there are many things the federal government cannot and should not do when it comes to education. Above all else, Washington cannot and should not micromanage our schools or our school districts. This bill eliminates NCLB's one-size-fits-all approach to education and re-empowers those closest to our children to make decisions. It does so while, while also demanding that states and districts take action to turn around schools that consistently fail our children. This bill also requires transparency about how much we're investing in high and low poverty schools, includes greater support for our teachers and school leaders in areas like preparation and retention, teacher leadership opportunities, residency programs, and training for principals, and it includes better support for rural schools and more funding for innovation. Fixing No Child Left Behind is just one step, but it should make some meaningful progress for our students, our teachers, and schools all across Colorado. And I can appreciate that we should have a debate about what level of government should do what. But I believe that there is no doubt that we have a vital national interest in making sure that education liberates all children to fulfill their potential. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.